For those of you who want to contribute, we're going to start a GoFundMe for the Kensington Place <laughs> Studio sex hammock that we will have. <laughs> <and we'll>, uh... <laughs> News, reviews, interviews, and all things metal. From the Kensington Place Studios, it's According to Metal with Jason and Dick. Did you miss us? We missed you, so I know you missed us. And okay, I know it's been a little bit. It's okay. We'll get you caught up to speed on a lot of things that have happened in the metal world and in our world. But welcome to According to Metal, folks, where it's news, reviews, interviews, and all things metal. Hey, it's been a couple of months. It's okay. We're back. You're back. It's all right. We're friends, buds. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. So much to talk to you about. So much to get caught up with you on. New jobs for me and my co-host. New living arrangements at least for my co-host of course i'm jason in the kensington place studios always where i broadcast from but you know i mean the show got too big the show got too big our budget got way increased from what it was before and you know he had to relocate he's got is uh, his, his, his setup is just sweet I, I won't even get into it as much i'll just tell you that there's albums on the wall he's got his metal dungeon ready to go he's broadcasting ready to talk to us ready to talk to me he's got a sex hammock swinging in the corner i don't know what he needs it for he says he needs it for the metal podcast i don't really get it but anyway my my co-host, my partner extraordinaire, Biv. What's going on, man? Well, that's because this show gets bitches. And <laughs> so, you know, we had to have the hammock. I mean, that's why. Well, yeah, the sex hammock automatically is for the bitches based on – because no one loves talking metal uh, and, you know, progressive metal and album reviews. I mean, dude, we're reviewing Fate's Warning later on in the episode. I mean, that alone is going to get how many bitches to actually not only listen to the show, but how many are going to actually come – to your where you're broadcasting from i mean several dozen oh, i'm dude. guessing they're gonna show up moist that's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I mean... well, we just offended about half of the audience there but for the rest of you that are with us i'm glad that you're still here yeah way to come <laughs> way to come back but yeah it's been a couple of months man uh yeah, biv and i would love to say we do this for a living we do this as a career and hey maybe with your help down the road that may be possible uh, we get some really kick-ass sponsors and we go on tour and uh you know we become eddie trunk just not douchebags that would be fantastic to actually consider that a career but in the meantime we can't do that we do this as a labor of love so i got a new job biv got a new job and i know biv has a new crib that uh uh, he's, uh, you know, now located in. So that's the explanation for the last couple of months of hiatus. OK, so as long as you're cool with it, we apologize. If you accept our apology, we can move on. Is that fair? Well, I think it's totally fair. Now, I do want to mention that I could never be Eddie Trunk because I don't have UFO records on the wall. <laughs> that's true. Um, so. <laughs> You know, I, we I never, never we I don't think we've ever mentioned UFO on the show other than to make fun of Eddie Trunk. Exactly. Right. And that's the only reason you would ever mention <laughs> UFO is to make fun of Eddie Trunk. So or maybe to reference Dr. Doctor. That's it. But, you well, know, that that's too. that's fine. And obviously Maiden comes out to that to start every concert. That's the only reason I ever ever talk UFO. Good song. It's about it. A good song by them. But, man, we have lots to catch you up on. And later on in the broadcast, of course, I mentioned we're reviewing Fate's Warning. And I know what you're thinking. Dude, it's been out for a couple. Shut up. We want to talk about it. So we're going to do that. Also, uh, Kiss and Dynamite's newest album. Um, and Jorn Landa's latest album, uh, Hard Rock or Heavy Rock Radio. Hard Rock Radio. I'm probably saying it wrong. We'll figure it out later on in the broadcast. But uh, three albums to review. And normally we do four. But we got lots of news to catch you up on. Lots of thoughts. Lots of opinions. So, Biff. Speaking of news, you ready to do this? Absolutely. Let's go, man. It's metal news. It's time to give you some headlines. The metal news you need to know right now. All right, so if you're new to the broadcast, thanks for joining us, and shame on you for just listening to this as the first episode, but if you've been an According to Metalhead for quite some time, you know that one of the things Biv and I like to do is we are friends outside of the podcast, but when it comes to show content, we try to make it to where there are no conversations about any of this stuff. 
prior to us hitting record and talking to you. So we want to try to make our uh, conversations about metal news and what's going on in metal as authentic as possible. And so with that, Biv, what's going on in the world of metal, my friend? Well, first of all, I have more news than CNN right now in well, the world of metal. saying much. Well, that's true. But <laughs> nonetheless. I think, I think CNN's still trying to find the uh, missing Malaysian airline plane. Right. They yeah, are. We're still talking about that. But anyway, go ahead. But, um, you know, as slow as, say, March through June were in the world of metal, and it was slow. In fact, there were episodes where we were kind of really scouring to find news. Which, sadly, right. is happening with album uh, <laughs> new album releases in July, at least. My God. Well, July was horrid. Yeah. Um, Hence why we're doing but, Fate's Warning. Just throwing right, that Right, which there. came out July 1st. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, um, well, not to mention the fact that they're one of the biggest names in the industry. That's true. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of news right now, particularly about albums getting ready to come out. So now, as to your point, Jason, you and I haven't talked about any of this. So you have no idea what I'm getting ready to hit you with. No clue. And some of it, some of it, I think, is really going to get you excited. Oh, so, well, I need a sex hammock. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Nice. I have my own. You should, too. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, it's that's what we do. And, and for those of you who want to contribute, we're going to start a GoFundMe for the Kensington Place <laughs> Studio sex hammock that we will have. <laughs> <and we'll>, uh... <laughs> what the I hell is to... going on? Anyway, Biv, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Biv. I want to see I want to see you explain that to your uh, eight babies. That's what I want to uh, see. It's, 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 <laughs> well, I don't have eight. I have four. But after <laughs> after four. Or if you have four, you may as well have eight or ten or seventeen. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. Yeah. All right. Well, first of all, now, this is the one item that you and I have discussed, and it's only because we had to coordinate buying tickets for it. And that is DT, uh, Dream Theater, that is, has announced their fall tour. Now, normally, no major band of any kind comes anywhere near Indianapolis, where I live, and Jason lives two hours north. But they're playing at the Marat here in Indianapolis, so Jason and I are going to go. Yes. Which is phenomenal. I'm excited about that. I am too. But they also ex- they also named uh, eight or nine other cities they're going to go to, so definitely check that out. You can go to dreamtheater.net um, and, and you know find out exactly where they're going. But it's a North American tour. Here in Indianapolis, it's going to be on Halloween night. Now, normally Halloween doesn't mean much to me. And I'm an. If you've listened to this show, you already know. I'm an old school Dream Theater fan, whereas Jason is more new school. So, this show is kind of going to be in a, a kind of a, a an odd mix for the both of us. Oh, I was just going to ask you if it's an extension of the Astonishing or if they're doing something entirely different. See, the Astonishing still, which is why they're playing the Marat because the Marat is a very historic theater. Mm-hmm. So, um, and if you follow the Astonishing Tour, you know that's all they played, where even though they could have sold out bigger venues, they played the smaller, more intimate, historic venues, the ones that were the old movie theaters back in the 30s and 40s. Well, that's what the Marat is. So, um, anyway, I'm so looking forward to it. I can't wait to go. Um, Lacey Mucklow was on this show um, several months back and gave us her take on uh, the Dream Theater show she, uh, that she saw. And now Jason and I are going to get a chance to experience it for ourselves. So, yeah, Absolutely. And we will give you the uh, our review of the show. Um, and actually, like I did with the Iron Maiden show that I went and saw, um, we will uh, do some you know uh, on-the-spot uh, impromptu, quote-unquote, segments for the podcast that we'll share with you that kind of give you our immediate thoughts of what happened. And I can't wait to see them. Um, I've seen them a couple of times, but uh, um, I think this is going to be a really great show. And I'll tell you what, you know, the, the Marat is a really cool venue, actually, especially for um, what it is. I've been in the Marat one time, and that was to see a band that's just as theatrical just as just uh, uh, just a large scale performance. And that's Slayer, as you know, um, you know, they're very, very, um, you know, elaborate in their stage show. I'm just kidding. Uh, but um, I saw Meshuggah and Slayer at the Marat. 
um, is the only time I've actually ever been <clears> to <throat> Marat before. And that was a long, long time ago. So I'm excited to go back because I think it was a really cool venue from what I remember. And to see Dream Theater and to see it with my dude Biv. It's even better. So that'll be fun. Oh, it will be. I can't wait. So that that's the first news item. And I had to get that out of the way just because <clears throat> that news just broke in the last 24 hours. And I'm and, going to uh, see two. You don't even know this, Biv. I'm actually going to see two concerts in October. I don't know if I told you this. I'm going to see uh, in Chicago. I'm going to see Megadeth with Amana Marth with Suicidal Tendencies with uh, Havoc. <laughs> Um, kind of a big show there, too, that I'm excited to see. And like we've talked about on the first ever episode, and we've talked about a couple times here, um, you know, they've incorporated uh, a handful of dystopia tracks, which are really good. And their set list looks awesome, man. Really awesome. Excited to check them out. So, of course, hey, stay tuned the next couple of months, especially October. You're going to get a lot of concert reviews from Biv and myself, not only from Dream Theater, but I'll give you my thoughts on Megadeth, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, I'm going with my buddy Elliot to Megadeth. So you've heard him on the broadcast before when we did there a kind of a review of Iron Maiden. Uh, so, uh, you know, he uh, referenced uh, eating White Castles and whatnot on the last episode. We'll probably have to do the same thing. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to it, man. And a lot of great concerts are coming through um, our neck of the woods, which is uh, always cool to see. And, uh, again, let's be honest, it's half the reason why people make – or you know, half of the way most bands make money nowadays. Uh, so it's the only uh, way they it's make the only money. Way, yeah. So besides merch, really. So, um, you know, if you dig these bands and they come through your town, you know, we – you know, our, you know, we we say what we mean, mean what we say. Go see them. Go check them out. Go support them. Absolutely. So, let's see. I have so much news. Um, let me get this oddball story out of the way first. Okay. Okay. Now, when I was growing up, my mother. That was in the twenties, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, in the eighteen twenties. Oh, eighteen! Oh, wow, that's even longer. That's like wow. For you know, by the, the way, folks, uh, you, know, you know, Biv just celebrated his 73rd birthday. So I did, Happy yes. I, no, actually, I just celebrated my 45th. But, <laughs> you know, when I, when I was growing up, my mother was definitely afraid of Ozzy Osbourne and the influence that he may have on her teenage son. Okay. Because, you know, he bit the head off of a bat right. and he, he played his record backwards. It had satanic messages and blah, blah, all blah. the other bullshit that, the Tipper Gore and whoever else had out there. Right. So actually I was grounded and forbidden from going to the Ozzy Metallica concert, which I went to anyway. Wow. Yeah, I did. I skipped school too. So I just figured, fuck it. If I'm getting grounded, I'm getting grounded for everything. <laughs> yeah. So I went and got stoned all day. And wow. At market square arena on the top level in the bitter cold. But I made sure I was going to see Ozzy and Metallica nice. anyway. So she's definitely afraid of Ozzy. Okay. Now, as were most people, yeah, you know, most, most parents 30 years ago. And I know you're thinking, where in the fuck are you going with your story? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're okay. I'm going to right. wait for it, right? Yeah, but, but you're going to smell what I'm stepping in here in a minute. Oh, God. <clears throat> so... Now, Ozzy and, and fuck Sharon and and the other, uh, the daughter and all that, but Ozzy Osbourne is doing the voice for a Disney cartoon. Now, let's think about this. This is the Prince of Darkness. This is, this is the lead singer of Black Sabbath. Think about that name, Black Sabbath. It, it, it's almost like Judas Priest. Uh. I mean... That's... Think about that name. Yeah. And now here he is doing the voiceover for Disney cartoons that will be on Disney XD channel. Oh, dude, I can't wait. So, I, you know, I read what the name of the cartoon is going to be, and it doesn't really matter. I don't give a fuck about that. Oh, it should. What the hell's wrong with you? Why don't we have this? Oh, I, I want to know the name of the cartoon and his character right now. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, I will post it on our page. How about yeah, that? please do that. There's a teaser for those of you who don't <laughs> like the According to Metal page on Facebook. You should do that, and you too can find out who Ozzy Osbourne's character is going to be on Disney. I can't but wait. Really? How fucked up is that? <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be. It's, what's going to be so funny is the guy. Uh, you know what I think would be even better is forget the finished product. I want to hear the outtakes. 
<laughs> That's I think that I, would be somebody correct. record that and YouTube that immediately. <laughs> somebody at Disney, if you're listening to this, and I know.